Dear students, this lecture is first in the series for Nyanya Electronics for K2 students. This lecture series is being prepared by myself, Boniface Peer, Dr. Anders, and Mr. Kiran K. The first module we have seen introduction about nanotechnology, mesoscopic physics, and classification of nanostructures. Second module dealt with fabrication of nano layers and nanoparticles. Third module we have seen tools to characterize and analyze nanomaterials. And in the fourth module we have seen two dimensional electronic system. Now in this fifth module we will be seeing transport of charge in nanostructures especially under electric field and in under magnetic field. First, we will be seeing transport of charge in nanostructures and electric field. This transport can be either parallel transport or perpendicular transport. Conduction band electrons in cosy 2D wells behave almost as free carriers for their motion along the planes parallel to the interfaces of the well, that is to the potential barriers. The main difference from 3D or bulk semiconductor is with respect to the density of state function and to the electron scattering mechanisms. The transport through the potential barriers at the interface, which is otherwise known as perpendicular transport, which is entirely different from the bulk semiconductors. And in 2D semiconductors, it is mainly based on quantum tunneling effect. First, we will be focusing on parallel transport. It is the flow of electrons parallel to the potential barriers at the interface. It is similar to 3D semiconductors, but here we need to consider electron scattering mechanisms as well as low dimensional considerations. And it was first investigated in conduction of electrons along the channel of MOSFET structures. Later, it received a great boost with the fabrication of MOSFETs in 1970s. For both the devices, electron motion takes place in a region free of charged dopants, and therefore, electrons can reach very high mobilities. During parallel transport of the electrons, there could be different electron scattering mechanisms. Mainly, they are classified as electron phonon scattering, impurity scattering, surface softness scattering, inner subband scattering. First, we will be focusing on electron phonon scattering. A phonon is a collective excitation in a periodic elastic arrangement of atoms or molecules in condensed matter, specifically in solids and in some liquids. And this electron phonon scattering is similar to what we see in 3D semiconductors. It is predominant for temperatures higher than 50 Kelvin. Phonons can scatter through several mechanisms as they travel through the material. Here we will be mainly focusing on acoustic phonons and optical phonons. If width A of a quantum well becomes very small, role of acoustic phonons is different from that of 3D case. In a 2D quantum well, uncertainty in the perpendicular component of the momentum should be greater than or equal to H by A, where H is the Planck's constant. That is, compared to a bulk case where acoustic phonons are having well-defined momentum, Phonon momentum is not conserved in electron phonon scattering in very narrow quantum wells. That is, as the uncertainty in the momentum increases, the number of electron phonon scattering mechanisms also increases. For this reason, phonon scattering becomes very considerable in low dimensional semiconductors. The case of optical phonons is quite different, especially for nanostructures of strongly polar materials such as third and fifth group compounds. Interaction is especially strong in the quantum wells when there is no overlapping between the optical phonon energy bands of the well semiconductor and the barrier semiconductor. Next is impurity scattering. As for 3D semiconductors, ionized and neutral impurity scattering constitutes the largest contribution to scattering in low dimensional semiconductors at low temperatures. The difference between scattering events occur in 3D or bulk semiconductors and a 2D system are. First one is, for parallel transport, the location of impurities is often separated from the 2D plane in which electrons move. 
For example, in a modulation doped heterostructure, charged donors are located in the aluminum gallium arsenide, while electron motion takes place in a separated region in the gallium arsenide parallel to the interface. Similarly, in a MOS structure, electrons move within the inversion channel, which is separated from impurities located in the thin gate oxide. Interface scattering or surface roughness scattering is due to the interaction of electrons with a roughened surface. Role of interface scattering for parallel transport in modulation of heterostructures is not very important due to the high perfection in interfaces when glow techniques such as molecular beam epitaxy are used. In the case of most structures, interface scatterings become more important since the oxide is grown thermally and the interface is not as perfect as in the modulation dope heterostructure. Roughness scattering like impurity scattering only becomes significant at low temperatures because phonon scattering is negligible. Now we will be focusing on inter subband scattering. First of all consider a 2D electron system that is confined in a potential well. For large electron concentrations inside the well, the levels with energies higher than the first one that is n equal to 1 will start to become filled. Imagine a situation in which the electron concentration is high enough so that Fermi level EF just closes the condensed level corresponding to n equal to 2. Then electrons with energies around EF can either undergo an interband scattering transition within the subband n equal to 2 or an interband transition between the subbands n equal to 1 and n equal to 2. That is, these electrons have two possible scattering channels and the total scattering probability should increase. As a consequence, the electron mobility should become smaller. This effect can be generalized to other subbands also. As the electron concentration in a quantum well increases, additional scattering channels start to contribute to the overall scattering rate and the mobility of the 2D electron gas decreases. Now we will see the concept of hot electrons in parallel transport. In some kinds of field effective transistors and in some nanostructures, electrons are accelerated to very high kinetic energies by electric field and these kinetic energies will be much higher than their energies at thermal equilibrium which will be in the order of k into t. After the acceleration by high electric fields, the electron energy distribution corresponds to an effective temperature higher than that of the crystal lattice and the electrons receive the name hot electrons. During their relatively short existence, they contribute to modification of the properties of the nanostructures. During this, the new electron energy distribution is said to be decoupled from that of the lattice. The electron distribution of average energy is given by E equal to 3 by 2 into K into Te, where Te is the effective electron temperature. This hot electron transport has been widely studied in bulk semiconductors and in nanostructures from 1980s. Studies of hot electron parallel transport in aluminum gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide heterostructures have shown that electron velocities under the action of an electric field are higher than in bulk gallium arsenide and the difference becomes larger at low temperatures. This is the plot of electron drift velocity against electric field for bulk gallium arsenide and aluminum gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide modulation doped heterostructure. Here it is evident that in the bulk gallium arsenide the drift velocity is low and in the modulation drop heterostructure the drift velocity is high and the inference from this plot is that the increase in velocity has been attributed to the condensation of electron energies in quantum wells. The value of the velocity is specially high for the lower subband that is E equal to E1 in comparison to the second subband that is E equal to E2. An interesting effect called real space transfer or RST arises for hot electron parallel transport. 
which is the basis of new kind of high frequency devices. When the energy of hot electrons is high enough, some of them will be able to escape from the well. In a gallium arsenate, aluminum gallium arsenate, gallium arsenate quantum well, for which the electrons are transferred in real space from the undoped gallium arsenate to the surrounding aluminum gallium arsenate doped semiconductor. In a low dimensional electronic device, electrons can be transferred from a high electron mobility material to one with a lower electron mobility as the voltage between source and drain is increased. If we are considering a gallium arsenate aluminum gallium arsenate heterojunction, the gallium arsenate is having high electron mobility and aluminum gallium arsenate is having low electron mobility. Here electron transfer will occur from gallium arsenate to aluminum gallium arsenate. As a consequence, a negative differential resistance region in the current against voltage characteristics is observed. Negative differential resistance effect leads to new kinds of devices such as resonant tunnel transistors. Here the diagram A is the schematics of RST mechanism. Diagram B is the structure of a device based on RST. Diagram C is the current against voltage characteristics. Here we are considering a gallium arsenate, aluminum gallium arsenate, gallium arsenate heterostructure. Once we apply a voltage between drain and source, there will be electron flow from high electron mobility material to low electron mobility material. Here gallium arsenate is having high electron mobility and aluminum gallium arsenate is having low electron mobility. So electron transfer will occur from gallium arsenate to aluminum gallium arsenate as we increase the voltage between drain and source. Hence we will be having a negative differential resistance region in the current against voltage carrier. Now we will be seeing the concept of ballistic electrons and velocity overshoot effect. In bulk samples that is in 3D semiconductors, transport under the action of electric fields is studied in regions of dimensions much larger than the electron mean free path. But in modern field effect devices, the source drain distance and the gate lengths are of very short and which will be in the order of hundreds of nanometers. Therefore, electrons can be accelerated under the action of an electric field without suffering any collision. And these electrons which are not suffering any collisions are called ballistic electrons. Ballistic electrons can reach drift velocities of the order of 10 raised to 7 centimeter per second which is higher than the saturation drift velocity by a factor as much as 2 and this effect is called velocity overshoot effect. This is the structure of modulation doped field effective transistor we were talking about. Mode fits are similar to metal semiconductor field effective transistors but with the difference that mode fits are made of different kinds of semiconductors that is heterojunction. The two different semiconductors create at the interface a very good conductive channel which is referred as 2DEG or two dimensional electron gas. Two dimensional electron gas is a scientific model in solid state physics which is free to move in two dimensions but tightly confined in the third dimension. The mobility of electrons in this channel is very high. To deplete the channel, a negative voltage must be applied at the gate. The voltage need to deplete the channel is called threshold voltage. Next, we will be focusing on the concept of perpendicular transport, which is the study of the motion of carriers perpendicular to the planes of potential barriers separating the quantum heterostructures. This kind of transport is often associated to quantum transmission or tunneling because carriers may not have enough energy to overcome these barriers. When a particle goes through a potential barrier, the wave function and its derivative must be continuous. Tunneling through potential barriers will also lead us to the concept of negative differential resistance in the current against voltage characteristics. This phenomena was already observed by Izaki in 1957 
these observations helped us to produce Golgi diodes and transistor. Resonant tunneling through a potential double barrier is one of the quantum vertical transport effects in nanostructures. It has more applications in high frequency electronic diodes and in transistors. Figure A shows the energy band diagram of a double barrier nanostructure made of undoped gallium arsenide surrounded by aluminum gallium arsenide in each side. Figures B and C show the same structure under increasing applied voltages. Figure D is the current against voltage characteristics for the gallium arsenide aluminum gallium arsenide nanostructure we are considering. Resonant tunneling occurs for a voltage V1 equal to 2 capital E by small e where capital E coincides with the quantized energy level capital E1. In this situation Fermi level EF of the metallic contact on the left coincides with n equal to 1 level in the well. Then the tunneling transmission coefficient approaches unity and a large current flows through the structure. As the voltage increases over 2 E1 by E, Fermi level EF surpasses E1 and the current through the structure decreases. Evidently, for high values of V, the barriers that electrons have to tunnel become much smaller and the current increases again. The most important feature in the IV carrier is that after the maximum value, the slope of the curve becomes negative. That is, there exists a region with negative differential resistance. Before winding up, we will go through a summary of the points we have discussed in this session. In this session, mainly we have focused on transport of charge in nanostructures under electric field. This transport can be either parallel transport or perpendicular transport. Parallel transport is the carrier motion along the plane parallel to the interfaces of the quantum well. The parallel transport of carriers is similar to what we observe in bulk semiconductors. But in case of 2D semiconductors, we need to consider the characteristics of density of state function and electron scattering mechanisms such as electron phonon scattering, impurity scattering, surface softness scattering and inter subband scattering. Then, in parallel transport, we have seen hot electrons. Hot electrons are electrons which are accelerated to high kinetic energy by electric field. Then, we have seen real space transfer of electrons. Because of that, electrons are transferred from high electron mobility material to low electron mobility material, which will result a negative differential resistance in the current against voltage characteristics. Then we have seen ballistic electrons and velocity overshoot because of the low dimensions of nanostructures which is smaller than electron mean free path. And finally we have seen the perpendicular transport which is the carrier motion along the plane perpendicular to the interfaces of the quantum well. The, there we have focused resonant tunneling and we have seen negative differential resistance due to resonant tunneling. Thank you.